Welcome to the Ortega Path to Enlightenment. My name is George Ortega, and we're recording this on September 12th, 2017. And this is episode number 20, Enlightenment and Cruelty to Animals. Um, basically, the idea b behind this episode is like, it's pretty impossible to be enlightened either as an individual and as a society, as a global civilization, to the extent that we're continuously abusing uh, in, in many ways torturing um, tens of billions of animals every year. Um, before I get started, um, I just wanted to mention that um, the studio supervisor here at uh, White Plains Community Media, Keith Baker, um, and I are hosting a, a new television series called Veganism, The Compassionate Choice. Okay, Keith is producing it, and it, we just started airing episodes. Um, it's on here on, on the White Plains Station on Sundays at 5 p.m., on Wednesdays at 9, and that, that the Wednesday night um, time may change, and on Fridays at 10 p.m. And you can also like access the episodes on YouTube. Just Google uh, Veganism, The Compassionate Choice, you know, they, they, or, or just go right to YouTube. You, you'll find the, the channel. So, so again, so that, that, you know, that show is devoted to, you know, just the benefits of a vegan diet. It's not just about being kinder to these animals. It's about, you know, being healthier, being, being kinder to yourself, to your kids, you know. Um, okay. So, and also to the climate, you know. All right. So basically, with this, today's theme, it's basically, you know, this... To enlightenment again. This 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 series is about enlightenment. Enlightenment to, is to a great extent about happiness, but it's also to a great extent about goodness. You can't be enlightened to any degree when, um, for example, you're you're eating meat. I mean, like it, you know, and it's not like that you're actually personally torturing these animals yourself. Um, but if you're paying somebody to do that for you, that's you know, it's the same. And you know. And, you know it, that complicity and that and this kind of like uh, uh, of organized, just systematic torturing of these animals is just horrible. I mean, it's a, it's not you know it's not like you can't you can't even forget about enlightenment. You can't claim to be a good person, you know, if you're involved in this. All right. Now, having said that, you know, I just you know I just finished a 216 episode series on why nothing is up to us on wh why we don't have a free will you know this basically we are who we're destined to be you know if, if we're you know if we're if we're vegan you know we it's not like we chose that it's just that we're we're, we're fortunate enough to to have that compassion to have that wisdom um and so like these people that that um that are really, I mean, they're being extremely cruel. I mean, you, you know, you, you can't describe it in any other way. You know, they're in denial. They don't want to know about it and stuff. But, you know, it's not, again, it's not, they're not only just not enlightened, but they're, they're just very cruel. But part of it is that, that you can't really blame them for that because they don't have free will. And actually, you know, this is an interesting kind of an understanding because, like, just like with climate change, um, about 54% of the American public, at least as, um, as of 2014, denied that it was happening and then denied that human beings were causing it. And part of the reason for this, not the entire reason, is that when scientists, you know, when the, when, when the world is telling people, you have a free will, what you do is up to you, and then the world is telling them, well, what you're doing is so horrible that by 2100, you know, civilization may be over, you know, because of all the, the different negative impacts of climate change. People can't hear that. So they go into denial. They say, oh, you know, we can't be that horrible. You know, we wouldn't of our free will do something so horrible. So, you know, and just as they deny that climate change is happening, that we're like causing it uh, because they believe in this free will. It's the same thing works with this, the, this animal cruelty. And that, that's what the reason I mentioned it. You know, to the extent that like, that people are, were to understand that, fine, they're being evil and, you know, again, in, in this world, when we are good, we tend to be rewarded. When we're not good, we tend to be punished. But to the extent that they understand that it's not really their fault that, that they're like that, they 
may want to just change just to avoid the punishment. You know, they'd, they'd be able to look at, at what they're doing without this guilt, without the shame, and see it clearly, you know, be compassionate toward the animals and be more compassionate toward themselves. All right, so again, um, this is, um, you know, mainly this is about goodness. Um, you know, just the, the way we treat these animals, I'll get into it uh, in a bit more detail, um, but it's, it's, it's just like, it's beyond evil. And you, you, you can't imagine, you know, ordinarily you would think that as, <coughs> as we as a civilization, especially in the rich countries, become richer, you know, just have easier lives in various ways. You know, we're not struggling for, to survive like we did two, three hundred, four hundred years ago to that extent. Uh, that you'd think we'd become much better people. Um, and it's just, it's very ironic. It's very just, you know, it, it's, you know, it's tragic that, that actually, you know, a lot of, you know, this modern world that we have, maybe it's, 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 maybe it's tended to corrupt us because, like, we just don't want to know, you know. We just want to um, um, just go on with our lives and just not look at it, not, not pay attention to it. So, um, so again, it's not just about us as individuals, it's about uh, this, this entire world, because, I mean, this, this animal cruelty is going on in every country of the world, pretty much. I mean, there are some, you know, some rural regions of the world where they don't, you know, they're, they still eat animals, but at least they're kinder to the animals. At least the, the cows have, you know, fields to graze on, and the chickens are not, you know, crammed into cages, you know, for their entire lives, you know. So it is, the animals are treated um, more humanely in some areas, but that's that's relatively rare. I believe, you know, um, I think that the figure is well over ninety percent of of the animals eaten in the world are are basically created or produced in in factory farms. So, all right. So it's about goodness. It's about compassion. It's about understanding that these animals, you know, they feel pain. You know, they. You know, I'll get into that a bit more later. Um, you know, it's just about being good. I mean, when 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 you suffer, you know what you know you know what it feels like, and then you know. So basically, we have this capacity to suffer and to empathize, so we know how it feels, so that we we act according to what we know, according to our experience, and we treat others and we treat you know animals uh, in this way. And and we know this for many of us have pets, and and we wouldn't dream of doing to our pets what we what people do you know have done to these animals before they, you know, become uh, their meals. So, so it's about compassion. And again, it's really to a great extent about wisdom because um, there, as um, Keith and I actually just did an episode recently on this, that um, there are so many health-related illnesses, just so, so much bad that happens to our bodies as a result of eating meat and dairy, you know, eggs. Um, just, it's, it's just bad for our body. It just creates a lot of heart disease, diabetes, just, um, just across the board. It, it's just, it, 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 the, the idea is that, you know, this isn't just about compassion for other, for animals, animals that we abuse. It's about being compassionate and wise about ourselves and our families. Or if, if we're feeding our kids, you know, um, meat, you know, and, and, and dairy, um, you know, we're basically, you know, I mean, like sometimes like this, you know, our world has become obsessed with terrorism. Fine, it's a danger. But, you know, if you want to protect your kids and yourself, you know, your, what you're eating is, is much more dangerous to you, you know, probabilistically speaking, you know, statistically speaking, than, than the chance that you're going to be a victim of, of a terrorist act. So, um, so basically, you know, this is about wisdom. This is, isn't just about compassion toward the animals. It's about, like, taking care of yourself and taking care of your family, you know, people you care about. All right, so again, it's, it's really, it's pretty impossible to be enlightened without than being a vegan without just you know, saying to yourself, I'm not going to like take part in this. This is like, this is similar to, you know, to what was happening in, in World War II with, with the Nazi party, with the Germans um, and, the, and the concentration camps, the Holocaust. I mean, you know, those, I, I think that the, the level of suffering is probably very comparable. Um, and we can't really be so anthropomorphic 
anthropocentric as, as human beings to, to kind of like claim that we matter more than animals. I mean, like, uh, for example, with pigs, you know, who we were to, uh, again, I'll get into this, I guess, next. Um, they, we, 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 pigs are more intelligent than dogs, and we know the dogs suffer. You know, we have them as pets. We know that, that you know, we know how much they suffer. We, you know, we know they're capable of great suffering. And so, you know, basically we, we tend to see suffering in terms of like how intelligent a being is. So that pigs are more intelligent than dogs and the way we treat them is just, you know, it's beyond um, understanding how we can do that. So, um, so again, like you, to, be, to be enlightened, it, it's, it's imperative that, that, that one stop eating meat um, because to continue eating meat is just like, it's the height of, of, of callousness and cruelty. Um, all right, so again, like these animals do feel pain. It's not like, you know, and it's not, this isn't a matter of opinion. You know, this, they've, they've studied this. They, they study this in labs. For example, a lot of times people think that fish who aren't all that developed as, as, as organisms. Their brains are very small and all. You, you, you know, people think that they don't feel pain, but they do. I mean, basically, like, the way we understand pain in human beings is, like, there's, there are physiological responses. There are stress responses. There are these neurotransmitters, these hormones, these, these neurochemical processes that happen when we're under stress, when we're under pain. And they have found these same processes happening in fish. And, and, and in chickens and, and birds and, 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 and other mammals. So not only do we have the visual experience, I mean, it's easy to see a dog or a cat or, or a pig or a cow or a horse, you know, suffering. You know, they, they, you know, they, you, it, it's, it's undeniable, I mean, the, the, the signs that they show when they're suffering. But it, it's beyond that. We, we have physiological evidence. So, so these, these animals do suffer horribly. Um, and... Again, uh, the factory farms um, are basically the, um, the area where the vast majority of this suffering takes place. I mean, it also takes place in zoos and in labs, you know, uh, medical labs. But the factory farms, about 60, 70 billion animals um, every year are, are essentially tortured, um, not just in, um, in how they're slaughtered, um, but also in how they're... Um, cared for before they, they um, become, before they're, they're slaughtered. One example, for example, uh, female pigs, sows, they are um, in many cases held in these gestation crates. Basically, they're there to give birth. They, they impregnate them, and they're there to give birth so they have more s pigs to slaughter. And the problem is they're kept in cages so small that these sows can't, they don't have enough room to even turn around. And they're kept in these cages for months at a time. Um, and what happens is they, they get pregnant and then they, they may be moved to a, a bigger uh, cage, maybe, to allow their, their, um, their offspring to suckle and all just so they can just you know, nurse them. But then they're returned back to these uh, crates. And so like they, they may experience this this kind of horror, this tragedy, um, for for several years um, before they're they're slaughtered. So, and you know they they've again the, the, these these sows when they're kept in these confined spaces for day after day, week after week, month after month, they just go insane. They go insane with pain. You, you know, you, if you go on on YouTube um, on the internet, you can see videos of the 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 behavior, the repetitive. Um, catatonic behaviors that these sows go, sows go through. Um, so it's horrible the way we treat them. It's not just about the sows. It's also, for example, chickens. There are two kinds of chickens that are um, bred for consumption. There are the, the chickens that are for, um, for, for meat, you know, the broilers, and there are chickens that are for eggs, um, to, to lay eggs. And um, so what happens with the broilers, they're kept in these like airplane hangers, um, tens of thousands of chickens, 30,000 chickens perhaps in one place. They, um, they stay there and it, it's, it's relatively dark. 
you know, for about seven weeks, and the, the place is not cleaned up in those seven weeks, so they're, they're defecating all over the ground, and they're urinating all over the ground, and that's the only ground that they have, and they're packed in there so, so densely that they can't move around, and that's the entirety of their existence. I mean, and, and it, the, the conditions become so horrible that workers there have to like have gas masks to enter the place because otherwise the ammonia is so strong it just like would wreak havoc on their respiratory system. It, it's just like cruelly insane. And basically the, the conditions are so horrible that that's why they have to, you know, inject these antibiotics into them, you know, because like they're otherwise they're prone to so much infection. And the problem with that is that you inject, you ingest those same antibiotics and that so then if you need an antibiotic when you're sick oh, you, you might realize that it doesn't work so much because the bacteria in your system has developed a tolerance because of these antibiotics so again it's not about how it, it harms them it's about how, how it harms you as well so the broil, broilers spend their entire lives you know in these again just packed in their in their own you know feces and urine for seven weeks and the the leg the egg laying hens um, don't have any better really they the, in in most farms they are packed um, they have cages that are about a foot by a foot you know um, and and there may be seven five to seven hens in each of these cages and they spend their entire lives in these cages and they they don't have enough. Uh, room in these cages to even like spread their wings, you know, no, I mean, it, imagine, just imagine these, 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 these uh, imagine, imagine if you were in, in a place like that, you know, I mean, it, it's just horrible. It's horrible. Um, and something else that's horrible is, um, you know, again, like the way they're slaughtered, the way the, the pigs are slaughtered, sometimes they're slaughtered, they're, they're scalded in, in these baths of, of, of boiling water while they're alive and the cows are just you know they're they're, they're hung on their on their feet while they're alive uh, it, it's horrible but even before that like with with veal in order to create veal I mean this is so sick this is so god awfully sick and you, you have to wonder how people you know allow this to happen how people devise the, the, this kinds of torture just so so for some kind of like a, a delicacy um, to create veal, basically they take calves, these, these young cows, in order to have their, their meat be tender so it's more tasteful and soft and whatever, uh, they, they deprive them of sunlight. They keep them basically, you know, in the dark all their, all their, their entire lives and, and they're not allowed to, um, they're basically chained up. They're not allowed to move because they, they found that if, if they run around, then that toughens the muscles and that's not good for veal. You know, so they basically, um, they keep them chained up in the dark, feeding them only um, liquids. You know, they don't get any um, solid foods because the solid foods, again, would, would make, make them taste less good. So that's how sick this has become. Um, and it's all over and, and, you know, again, it's not just, you know, as, as a society, again, you know, um, <laughs> I'm telling you, the, the, the comparison between what the Nazis did and what we're doing, you know, it's pretty similar. Fine, it's a different species, different species of animals, but like, you know, I, and, 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 and actually, you know, when you think about it, uh, in some ways what we do to animals is just a lot more horrible than what most, you know, um, prisoners in, in the, the Holocaust went through, and, and what they went through is, is, is horrible beyond, you know, description. So this, this will give you an idea of, of what this world is like, how we treat animals, how unenlightened we are. Um, it's not, you know, again, it's not just, and it's, a lot of it is so senseless. Um, in addition to, to the factory farms, you have a lot of this cruelty going on in um, like puppy mills. You know, again, the puppies are just like spend, you know, th these, these, these days when they're puppies, when they should be just enjoying their life, they're just crammed into cages. Um, you have in, in laboratories, you know, um, we have so many, 
so many shampoos, for example, that work really well, that people like them and all. But for companies to make more money, they have to come up, they think they have to come up with, with new products. So what they do is, for example, to test that so that we don't get hurt. So it like when it, when it goes into our eyes, so it, it won't cause harm or whatever. You know, what they do is they test these shampoos. They, they'll um, take a rabbit and, you know, with a collar, just make the, the rabbit's head immovable, you know, and they, they stay that way for days, perhaps weeks. And they then with, with eyedroppers, they put this, the, this, these shampoos into their eyes so their eyes become infected, you know, so they can measure, so they can study the level of in infection. It, it's, it's, it's insanely cruel. It's insanely sick. Um, and this, you know, this is for no other reason than, than companies want to make more money because, again, we have more than enough shampoos that have been tested. And even so, even the, with the ones that haven't been tested, it's been shown that a lot of the experiments that they do, a lot of the, this testing is just unnecessary. They can determine whether a, a product is healthy or not without this cruelty. So this is the extent of, of what we do. Um, you know, talk about enlightenment. I mean, like, it's not, enlightenment isn't just about individuals, you know. Uh, yes, you want to be enlightened to, to benefit from the, the, this evolution, you know. We, 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 we try to become better people. We try to be happier, you know. We try to, like, you know, be more in touch with the reality of our world rather than living our lives in, in, in various delusions. And that's what enlightenment is about. But it's not just about people. It's about, you know, us as a culture, us, us as a global society. And, um, you know, what happens, I think many, many of us can understand. I mean, here's, here's a great disconnect. You know, um, many of us, for example, here in the United States, are, are religious. We, we, we believe that there is a God, there's a, a, a being that controls everything, that created everything, that, you know, Basically, I mean, and, and, you know, actually getting back to the free will perspective, you know, it, it really is God who's doing this. It's not our fault. So, you know, I, I need to stress this because even though it is horrible, you know, it's not really our fault. But the problem still is that, like, even though as unfair as this world is in this sense, even though we're made, these, these people who, who abuse these animals, these people who pay for these animals to be abused, even though it's not up to them, even though they're being fated or destined to act that way, they're still being punished, you know, by that. And so, like, again, uh, it's not just the, um, the punishment that comes as individuals. And when a person becomes obese and then they develop diabetes and they lose a limb or when they, bec they um, develop these, these um, heart conditions that, that basically kill them, um, you know, years before they should have died, I mean, like, just the, 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 that's the punishment, that's the punishment that, 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 um, that goes along with this kind of behavior, but it's not just as individuals. I mean, like, when you look back, I mean, we human beings, um, you know, who knows why it happened, how it happened, but like, we have been exceedingly cruel for, for centuries. I mean, you just go back to the Crusades when, you know, if you didn't believe in God, they would just torture you. You know, um, slavery, you know, just like the, the horrors of slavery. Um, and then, you, you know, what people don't realize is that, you know, there is, as unfair as it may be, there is a natural justice that to the extent that we're good people, we tend to be rewarded for the goodness. To the extent that we're not good, we tend to be punished collectively. So when, for example, like in, you know, 1917, whatever, we had this World War I, you know, I think about 50 million people died. Um, um, it was a horrible war. Before that, the Civil War was a horrible war. There's wars going on, you know, everywhere they're, they're horrible. In 1918, there was a, there was a plague. Um, the, the Spanish flu, I believe, it, it killed about 50 million people. Then you had World War II. So, you know, things happen in these hurricanes. Just things happen to us as, as people that, you know, when, when, you, when you see it spiritually, you know, that again, you know, there's this moral component to reality and it affects us not just as individuals, but as uh, collectively as societies, as an entire planet. 
you know, you, you, it doesn't take much to put two and two together to understand that, yes, we are rewarded collectively for the good we do. We're also punished. So with, with this animal cruelty, um, what happens is that um, what most people don't realize is this factory farming that we engage in, it's responsible for as much as 51% of, of the uh, greenhouse gases that are causing climate change. And um, it may be as little as 20, but it's probably somewhere in between, which is a lot. Even if it's, a, if it's responsible for one third of climate change, that, that's it's horrible. So basically that's, you know, that's our natural punishment to the extent that we don't stop torturing these animals, that we don't stop eating these animals and start behaving, you know, again, not perhaps not enlightened, or whatever, but at least as good human beings collectively, then yeah, then, then yeah, we'll suffer to a certain extent. I mean, in this last hurricane that, um, that hit Florida, we were lucky, you know, we were lucky. I mean, it, it was supposed to be a lot worse, but as we go into the future, hurricanes are gonna be a lot worse and droughts and floods and, and then the geopolitical instability that, that, um, that results when, when certain countries, um, you know, don't have enough resources to survive and wars begin and all. A lot of the, the wars in the Middle East actually are resource-based wars, you know, to a certain extent um, caused by climate change. So, you know, this is, this is not just about, you know, personal enlightenment and personal health. This is about, to a great extent, our survival as a civilization. All right, um, so again, read about this. You know, read about what, what uh, um, animals go through. Read about how horrible it is and just stop eating them. Stop, you know, become a vegan. You know, stop buying these products from, from people who, who just torture these animals. All right, um, this isn't a show I, I enjoy doing, but, but it's something, you know, like part of enlightenment is like, you have to like take it, you can't look away from things like this. You have to look at, at the world the way it is. All right, so um, we'll be back uh, in other episodes to explore more about uh, enlightenment. Thanks for watching. Basically, we, we would become afraid and that fear was a messenger to us that something in, envir in our environment needs to be other than how it is, okay? So, so the Buddha got this, but here's where he went wrong. The, the third noble truth, it's, it's kind of like a non-